What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Are There Any Good Luxury Brands Left in This World? Because I'm starting to doubt it. We've had a rough couple episodes here looking at the top 100 luxury brands in 2023, trying to figure out who is best, who is worst, where do they land on that tier list. Uh, last episode, we looked at some really, really rough ones, especially some ones that I have some personal vendettas against apparently and now we're just trying to find out like what's going to make the cut what's actually worth wearing next year it's really close to being this year that's actually scary but anyway enough dilly dallying my friends let's get into it let's start rating these brands and a quick reminder, we are rating each of these based on their most recent runway collection or lookbook, whatever they got. We're not going off history, off of the legacy, the heritage. Listen, we are just going off the latest thing that they are showing. So you can see we've got our S tier here, very thin. The A tier starting to fill out a little bit. Then we've got like the B, C tiers. That's where most things end up falling. And then as we go down, we get the Marshalls clearance. This is the brands that you're only going to buy when they're like, you know, $3. <laughs> if it's any more than $3, we're not buying. And then finally, we've got the Forbidden Dungeon, which so far has been really just kept to two brands, Pierre Moss and Alexander Wang. So let's see if we can fill that out a bit today. Maybe we'll see. All right. So the first brand we are going to be looking at today out of the almost 100 brands we're looking at in this series J.W. Anderson, his namesake brand. He's also the creative director at Loewe, but this is his namesake, his baby. So let's see what he's been up to at J.W. Anderson. All right, Jonathan at William Anderson. I didn't know that was his full name, J.W.A. Uh, most recent collection, spring 2023. Let's see what's up. Uh, J.W. Anderson does a lot of really, really good stuff, but also very playful. Sometimes like too playful and conceptual if I had to to give it a name sometimes I just find it really really like tacky in that almost Moschino kind of way but uh, it's been a little bit since I've looked at a full collection so let's see the latest and it starts off uh, not with men's but it's kind of I think it's pretty gender fluid so let's see here so here we go we're starting right off with the the cheeky stuff right the ironic stuff J.W. Anderson Athletic Apparel Premium Blend Original Fit One Size Washing Instructions. So it's a shirt dress, wrinkled shirt dress with a giant, giant tag on it. Um, kind of like Vetement style, uh, but maybe a little less original. I don't know. I feel like I've seen Margella do this kind of thing. I've seen, of course, Vetement, a lot of other brands. I just feel like this isn't actually when J.W. Anderson is at his best. Um, and I actually like when he's doing more legit, straight up, de well-designed fashion. Uh, but some people really like this style as well. We got some boots. Very interesting, outdoorsy, like Gorp Core kind of boots. Why am I stuck in this image? What? All right, moving on. This does appear to be menswear at least being worn by a male model um it's that classic like harry styles gucci masculine person wearing a feminine piece kind of thing it's been done before nothing too special actually kind of has a bit of like a vivian westwood kind of look to it i really hate how i'm getting stuck in all these what the hell is happening so apparently clicking the image uh kills my computer so we're not going to do that anymore uh, we're going to skip. This is a more of a menswear type of look, I would say. Um, and this is getting more into the fun area. Like, there's actual design here. I get that it's like a pair of jeans up top, but it's actually, like, pretty pretty wearable overall and kind of fun. So it has the fun to it, but without, like, the, I don't know, over-the-top, like, look how clever I am type of thing. Um, kind of cool shoes. Reminds me of, like, the some of the... Crocs collabs that they do, uh, leather puffer shorts. I don't really like the fit, but I love the idea. Uh, like a full pair of pants of those, like ski pants, would actually be sick. Listen, I like I like the entire concept. I'm um, I'm down with it. And here's the hyper conceptual stuff going on here: keyboard dress. Uh, it's not menswear, so I won't talk too much about it. There really isn't much menswear here, is there? Is there any? Hold on. We may have made a mistake. 
we got to find JW here. Is, is there specific menswear collections? Now I'm confused. Ah, I see. I clicked the wrong thing, apparently. My fault, y'all. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some overlap, but man, we got we were getting started on the wrong foot here. Okay, but yes, yeah, so this the same thing still holds. This handlebar thing is so dumb. It only exists for runways because no one's going to buy it. You know what I mean? Maybe some like archivist or whatever, but no real customer wants the handlebars. Uh, but then when you zoom in, you know, it's a nice striped t-shirt. These jeans are very, very cool. Double waistband jeans, uh, but being done in a unique way. Like, of course, Balenciaga, they do the double waistband things, but this is a very different type of treatment. Uh, I like the distressing. It's some really nice natural distressing. And these loafers are absolutely sick. It's like the next step up. He uh, did the ch giant chain loafers, and those were a smash hit. And now we've got this big metal plaque over the top. It's a nice little extension. So it's a really good look. And also, oh, why did I click the image? The logo tape underwear poking out. Nice touch. We've got a duplicate look. Nothing much to say there. Um, okay. This, like, actually reminds me of the Pierre Moss Couture show. The same, like, liter literal mindedness. Um, honestly, if these were just eyelets, I would like it more than if they were a cans opening. I think it's just like too cute for me. The humor is too cute. But again, this these jeans very cool. Now it's got like a diagonal type of cut and we got the loafers in red. So there's things to like. Uh hmm. Interesting pockets, some nice embroidered patterns, loafers in yellow. So we're getting some variations on the same thing. So this this look kind of broke the internet. I saw this one posted everywhere, the broken skateboard making almost like a heart going through the sweater. Uh, J.W. Anderson does some of the best knitwear out there. I absolutely love his sweaters. And this one's no different. It looks like a really nice uh, mohair. I really like the cut of it. And again, if you just got rid of the skateboards, which I'm sure, you know, that's what's going to happen in actual stores, it's a much better piece. Just like a gray mohair whatever blend sweater with these slits in it, I bet looks really, really cool and really interesting. But doing these for the runway, I just, I don't like the effect of it. But then how do you rate it? Because at the end of the line, when it's actually in stores, it's going to be the cool version without the skateboards that is actually being sold. So I don't know, sick pants. So it's basically taking the seam down the front instead of the sides. Really creative. Super creative. I think they're leather. I like this nice, like, color-blocked look. Whoa. So we've got denim, super distressed with, like, khaki poking out underneath. Again, a very um, Balenciaga type of concept, but also these jeans. Raph Simmons does this style of jean that torn up things coming out of other things really well. Uh, so... While I like it, I have nothing wrong with it. I think it's a bit derivative. Um, now in blue and black, same same concept. All right. So we've got a sleeveless hoodie, nice and oversized embroidered logo, and a hinge for the pocket. This is like just the right amount of cheekiness for me because I still find this very wearable and the hinge doesn't detract from the actual piece of clothing that it is. It's just an extra touch that takes it over the top. So I actually really like this. Um, these leather shorts, I think are quite cool. I like the natural leather. And these shoes are absolute insanity. It's like a, a slightly more bulbous version of the Prada America's Cup. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Barcodes coming out this distressed knit. This is a little bit vetement territory, but I like it. I really do like it. The short sleeve in the sweater too. Very cool. Ooh, the extra waistband all the way down there. I like this look Qu quite a bit, quite a bit. CD hoodie is really ugly. I do not like it. Whoa, giant disco ball slides. I fuck with it. We probably have to call it pretty soon because, like, we've seen a lot here. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. I don't know what it is. Uh, cool boots, though. The footwear design's been very interesting. 
what is going on here? The pixelated block distress sweater. I actually love this. This is fantastic. Very, very cool sweater. Variation on a theme. Now that's poking out here with the barcodes. It's actually quite ugly, uh, but I appreciate what he's doing. This glove on the deep V and knit vest. I like it. I think that's pretty cool. Again, it's like the right amount. It doesn't, it's actually wearable as opposed to the handlebars or skateboards or whatever it is. Whoa, what the hell was going on there? Whoa, leather sleeves. I'm down. Super long gloves. Very nice jacket. Incredibly wearable. That's a really nice jacket. The fit is great too. Ugh, J.W. Anderson, you make it so hard for me when I rate you. A little tailoring coming in. Not, not the best tailoring I've ever seen. I'll say that much. Ooh, now incorporating the sleeves into a knit. That's so nice. Cute shoes too. They're cute. All right, I think we've got to call it. But this is what I like about JW is that I always want to keep looking. I always want to see what's coming next, but for the sake of time, let's call it there. So JW Anderson, I don't know. I think overall there are a couple things, consistent things in his design that I don't like, but everything else I really, really like. I like the point of view. Um, I like, he is actually a good designer. I just think he doesn't use it in the best way all the time. But like, that's a taste thing. And I get he wants to be a showman and have, like it works really well. It gets him lots of engagement on social media because everyone wants to be like, whoa, did you see this crazy thing? Having the fashion people gone crazy again? Like normies love doing that. Um, so I think it's way better than anything in the seat here. It's better than most of this as well. Um, ooh, damn. It's like right between A and B. I don't think he's quite made it to A tier yet, but this is like very, very, very top of the B tier. Actually kind of similar to Doublet, but I'd say a little bit better. So I actually didn't know I rated him this highly, but very well deserved at the very top of the B tier. All right, next up, we are gonna talk about Sakai. Oh man, super interesting. I think we might have some similar things to talk about maybe that we were with JW. So I like that these ended up next to each other. All right, let's check it out. All right, so this is designed by um, Jitose Abe. I don't know exactly how you pronounce her name, but she's a fantastic designer. I really, really like her stuff. Um, but man, I keep saying this. I haven't looked at a Sakai collection in forever. Uh, I, I looked at the one, she did a collection with JPG, which was very cool. But let's see what the mainline Sakai stuff is looking like these days. The cover image looking very Tom Brown, I will say. But there's always been a little bit of overlap between those two brands, I'd say. Similar ethos. Um, but we've got tailoring here with a sort of skirt, kilt, whatever you want to call it. Some beautiful pleat detailing on both of these pieces. I like how they go together. Normally you'd only see this type of pleating in the skirt, but seeing it come down the blazer as well is really cool. Um, this is what Sakai does so well, just these slight skews. Like look at that collar. It's half Mandarin, half traditional collar. That's what it looks like to me at least from the small bit we get. Uh, this over shirt with the camp collar I think is just a step too far. This probably could have worked without it. Unless this is part of the blazer, because now I'm seeing this come out here. Interesting. So Sakai also does hybrid pieces, so it's sometimes hard to tell what is all a piece of something else. Uh, some kind of like Clark's Wallaby style shoes, maybe even a collab. I can't quite tell. I actually really like these socks. All right, I mean, strong enough opening look, just quite reminiscent of another designer. And that's actually carrying through here. It just reads as very Tom Brown. Like if you just show me this picture, you gave me like, you know, uh, what's his name? Rainbow, the GeoGuessr guy. He'll do those crazy rounds where he gets it flashed at him for 0.1 seconds and then he has to guess where it is. 
If you did that to me with designers, I would guess this was Tom Brown, not Sakai. I don't like this design on the blazer. I like the stripes, but whatever's going on underneath is too much for me. Yeah, it's just very similar to that first one. I don't even know if I have anything else to say about it. All right, we're continuing on a theme, blasting that out into, into a coat. You can tell the craftsmanship is so good because look at even like the lining inside there, how it plays with the outside. I do like it and kind of like a nylon jacket coming up. So just throwing in some new elements. Okay. So, oh, that is a Loro Piana tag. So she's working with Loro Piana fabric. It's like the best fabric in the world, I would say. Most people would agree on that. So that's nice to see. I'm sure very, very expensive. Um, and it's so hard to know what to say about this. I'm not disliking it, but I'm not being blown away either. You know, a sort of like shirt jacket. Again, a nice hybrid piece. Uh, there's just like too much going on here to really know what's happening. Now we're getting crazy. Okay. Nice side stripe, like big, big parka, very interesting type of fit. Um, got like a zip up knit here. I really like the look of the tailoring. The construction looks phenomenal, but the style of it isn't my favorite. This I do like more. Once you do it in this kind of like uh, quilted rug type of style, the colors pop more, the design looks better. The fringe there, really nice. Just like a rug transplanted onto a parka. First time we're getting like legit pants. Really nice fit on those pants. Like the cut is just right. Mmm. This is a good look. A little bit more of like a punk element to it. But really just playing on that theme. Kind of reminds me of what we saw with the Prada collection from this year. I like the way that these two patterns play with each other. Both direction-wise and size-wise. Whoa. Very cool. Very cool kind of like knit varsity jacket. Nice pleating on the shirt. That also re that reads as Prada to me, actually. Especially like this. It just has that kind of mucha, mucha kind of look to it. Man, those pants are killer again, though. The fit on the pants is to die for. Oh, this looks very different. Although... Have we already seen this piece? It's just in a different color grading. Whoa. Also reads as Tom Brown. But it's a nice sweater. As one. I like the cut of this, but I don't like the design. But like designs, it's very subjective, you know? We really like twisted up underneath with all of this stuff cool like bomber bombery nylon jacket there i'm really struggling to come up with how to um categorize all this and what to say about it i don't know i just appreciate the craftsmanship um but i feel like it's not staking its own claim as a brand here i feel like it's really giving me flavors of too many other brands that sweater is sick though I really like that sweater. I just love a good knit. You know what I mean? All right. I think I got to call it. I think we're done because it seems like it's just going to keep playing on this. All right. Yeah, let's call it there. All right. Sakai. Uh, I just I do appreciate her work so much. It just it never quite gets over that hump for me to being like one of the great greats. Um, it, that's, it's significantly better than any, any of the C tier brands. Um, it's better than some of these. I think we're starting to get into this territory here. I think it's like right in the Prada to Vivian Westwood kind of range. I'll just drop it right there. I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. 
And that, that feels fitting to me. All right, we've got a heavy hitter right now because we've got to rank Louis Vuitton. Do they, do they even have anyone designing for them right now? I don't think so. Obviously, Virgil passed away. It sucks. Um, I think the last collection was the one that, that like Virgil has started working on, so the rest of the team finished it. But um, I'm not actually totally sure. Let's look at it. So I always really appreciated Virgil's Louis Vuitton, but didn't always love it. Pre-fall, we're already up to pre-fall 23. Hmm. I guess we are saying we're going with the most recent. So let's uh, let's check it out here. What do we got? And now I really don't know who designed this. A year after Virgil's passing, yeah, they don't have a director. So I think the team designed this. So it's still, they're playing with like the codes of Virgil, but it wasn't designed by Virgil. So this could be a very weird one. Virgil not designed by Virgil. What is that even going to look like? It's going to look like this, apparently. Um, especially the last couple seasons under Ablo, they really loved the kind of like retro branding. So that's front and center here in this moto jacket. It's got an interesting fit, uh, but I don't really love it. Some shorts, th those read as very off-white to me. Um, nice enough socks and some crazy shoes. They kind of look like a bad ripoff of the Lanvin curbs. So not like the most auspicious start, I would say, for a look. Um, the cartoonishness is there. I appreciate it. It's actually, the way the colors play is really nice, but I don't like the like overt cartoonishness, but that's just a subjective thing. That's a me thing. Um, Sunglasses are are fine. Carpenter jeans. If you're into the monogram, uh, this is pretty cool. Like, not for me, but I like a good carpenter jean. And I get that they have to put their monogram on stuff. It's, it's important to the brand. Um, as far as shoes go, I don't even know what these are. They look like, like bug stompers or something. I, quite ugly. Okay. This is a classic Virgil type of thing. He loved varsity jackets. Um, I like the button closure. Those are nice. It, it's just nice, but not great. Some shorts. That that kind of reads as Dior to me. A very, I don't know, boring backpack. Can I say that? And I hate these clogs. Yeah. Okay. All right. This might be my favorite look so far a uh, nice ski jacket interesting cut to it looks like it's also all over monogram and this one same deal with the yellow um sweater but i do like it and some cargo pants there's just nothing to be too mad about here but it's not like crazy innovative by any means also sorry for my voice you're just gonna have to put up with it this episode sorry um no i don't i don't really want to talk about this look what is this? Oh, that's hideous. All right, some tailoring. Something new. So boring. Some cool sunglasses, though. Socks, whatever. That looks like the Givenchy jaw sneakers. Have they just completely lost their identity after Virgil? It looks like they have no idea what they're doing. This, like, bomber is not very interesting. What are these pants? Oh, what happened? We started off like kind of okay. Did they front load it with their best stuff? They're kind of going for like a ski thing sometimes, but sometimes not. Two piece under here that looks, it looks like a bootleg thing, which is the thing that Virgil liked to play with. He liked to make Louis things that looked like bootleg Louis things. Uh, the jacket's fine. I like the fit of it. I like the way it puckers, but it's nothing special. All over logos, retro logos, yada, yada, yada. Nothing new. The shoes are out of left field. Uh, 
That sweater, it looks like something Virgil would have done. The blazer is terrible, though. Whoa. Is this... Is Louis Vuitton bad now? Virgil's tailoring was really good, too. This suit is trash, dude. Ew. Ew. Is anything going to be good? Oh, my God. It hurts. It hurts to see. Okay. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right, there were like a couple maybe saving graces there early on, but that got like really bad. Whoa. It was worse than the C tier. It really was. Um, we're right in this territory along with like Amiri, Ambush, Lavin. There. Ooh, it's clearance. I didn't think I was going to make them clearance. Like, I I don't love Louis Vuitton, but I don't hate him either. But that was so bad. Whoa. All right, let's let's wash that taste out of our mouths. Let's see if we can get something better from... Oh, God, how do I pronounce this? Jun J. I'm just going to say that. I don't know if it's right. Jun J. I, like, barely know this brand. I don't even know if I could tell you what their vibe is. So I'm going to find out what their vibe is. Let's go. Oh, whoa, and this is not what I expected it to be. So we don't have menswear broken out here, so I have to assume it's all in the same thing. Yes, we've got men here. Yeah, this was... I didn't think this is what Junjae looked like. Look at that. Very, very uh, striking opening look. It's interesting from a stylistic front, like a denim trucker jacket bomber hybrid. And the fit is wild. Uh, the shoes underneath, those give me like half Rick Owens, half Balenciaga. Super, super oversized. These are very Balenciaga, like explorer type pouches. But the jacket's very cool. That's a really cool idea. Similar vibes here. Very cool. Really interesting fit. Okay. So we're playing heavily with the denim. I really like the fit of this blazer. They're actually trying something kind of interesting here. And this kind of like Trump Loe or just kind of like twisted denim short skirt is cool. Oh, and we get, okay, so these are sandals. So actually these read now more as like Prada. They're kind of like um, monolith type things. Let's get to the men. Okay. All right, a little hybrid here, like jacket, shirt, denim, whatever. Get a better look at this, like, apron type of thing. And we get those in white. I'm not mad about any of this. I find it all very interesting, actually. Is this menswear or women's wear? I don't even know, but I like it. Tactical denim vest. All right. Um, armband accessory. Sure, why not? And double waistband. Is that, like, actually a trend now? Is this a, a thing? But I like how it starts off super skinny and then just flares out with the cargo pants. But, like, they're, like, formal cargo pants, I guess. Super elongated. I don't know. This one is, like, half Balenciaga, half Boris Bijan Saberi. Hyper Distress, Double Waistband. Ooh, those are nice. They're really nice. So here's the thing. I think here's where, where I was confused is their shoe collabs that they do are so boring. But these clothes are way more interesting than any shoe I've ever seen from them. Nice, like, denim crossbody backpack. Uh, overall hybrid jeans with zips that give way to distressing very interesting whoa that's very balenciaga that really is all right we're getting more just variations on a theme mm-hmm mm-hmm heavy distressing and a cropped fit i like that they're playing with the different fits here 
Hmm. Ooh. Nice sweater. Very interesting fit. All right. So we're starting to see this. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't see that coming. Cropped leather jacket. Ooh, that's sick. I know it's on like a, it's for women's wear, but that's sick. That's like very, you could see that being like the next hot thing if it gets used in like a, a Blade Runner type of movie or something. Like people will be looking for knockoffs of this, right? Ooh. This feels very Vetmall. Lined in denim, so reversible. Oh, what a move. What a pro move. Dude, very smart. Damn, Gorp Core gone crazy, bro. What the fuck? So, like, listen, a lot of this, it's a little too close to the Balenciaga range of things. They just kind of own this space. But, man, some really interesting stuff there. Only 22 looks, and I actually wish there were more, but that's what we get. All right, Jun J. That was very, very interesting. Um, Oh, man. Do I like this brand? I really like that. And here's the thing. I don't... Oh, man. Well, we're going off just collection. I was going to say I don't know enough about them to put them, like, too high. But isn't the whole point of this that we're only going off what we see? If that's the case... Oh, man. It's either A or B tier. And I've just got to decide where. Ah. Uh, Damn. Like, if I'm being honest, I liked that more than that Diesel collection. And I liked it more than any of these. Goddamn. They just made it to eight here out of nowhere. That's the most unexpected pick of this entire series so far. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we need to celebrate. Help me out. Like, like this video or something. Do the YouTube stuff. I don't know. Just I'll, I'll beg for likes. That's how we celebrate. All right. Anyway, next up. We're going to look Acne Studios. The uh, Swiss? They're Swiss, right? The the Swiss powerhouse. Let's see what's up. All right, I'm pretty sure they do runway collections. They at least have a page. Do they do menswear runway collections? They do. It looks like we've got a very retro kind of style, like VHS look to it. Maybe a look. Yeah, lookbook. Okay. Acne Studios menswear. I've never, I don't think, looked at a menswear lookbook or runway show from this brand. Um, and that doesn't even look like menswear. Maybe it is. Um, hmm. It's trying too hard to be retro. It reminds me of, like, somebody's stereotype of what uh, Tom Ford looks like. You know? Um cool like popcorn sweater i like the super deep like fang collars short shorts and some like ballet shoes okay there's a lot of women's wear happening in this menswear collection okay hmm i like the uh sleeve tag i always think that's a nice touch it's got a good fit Interesting, kind of like square toe moccasins, maybe. Hmm. I don't know about it. I actually think of all of this, from what I can see, I like the idea of it in the undershirt the most. I like the, the styling, though. I like the set design. That's definitely women's wear. The That's women's wear. A lot of women. I think that's that's women's wear, too. What's happening? No, that's menswear. I don't know. I'm not. I'm just going to go with it. Vest underneath. Uh, cool shoes. Very cool shoes. But I don't have anything more to say about it. More of like the popcorn. So they're definitely going into like the 90s type of thing. Nostalgia trip. Patchwork pants look a bit meh. What the hell? Pretty cool. I like this like wrap sweater thing. 
but so many brands are doing the popcorn thing now. It's just like not that creative anymore. What the hell is going on there? Okay. Ugh. I just don't really like it. I'm not. I'm trying to figure out what it reminds me of. It's almost like trying to do Bottega Veneta, kind of. Like old under Daniel Lee Bottega. Like kimono blazer. I don't know. I'm just like not seeing the through line here. I'm not seeing how it all works together. I just don't have much to say about it, honestly. Membrane type of sweater shirt. And some weird, again, like front seam things with like a weird jock strap B thing happening. I don't know. It just kind of makes me sad, honestly. This feels like it's out of a completely different collection. I don't know. I don't like it. I, th I think, yeah, I'm done. That was just so weird. And I get, I understand for Acne Studios, I think people like it because... It tends to be very wearable and well-made, and it's usually at least slightly less expensive than, like, the top, top luxury brands. So there's a lot of, like, there's a lot to like there. Um, but from a design perspective, a styling perspective, a, a vibe perspective, I really didn't like it. Uh, I didn't find anything to like. Man, did I see the promise did i see any potential in it like not really i think that goes like around here yeah let's sort of, it's like right in the same league as jacques Moot and isabel marant where i get it it's luxury it's just it's just not good anyway let's move on and next i'm very excited about this because we got to talk about why project it's led by glenn martins who is also currently designing for diesel which I really liked, and I've historically liked Y Project quite a bit. Sometimes I found it a bit too esoteric, a bit too abstract to really break into and dig my teeth into, but I'm very curious to see what they're up to these days. So let's find out. All right, 23 menswear. Here we go. Definitely not menswear in the cover. I wish Vogue would stop doing that. I think they just take the first image, but come on. All right, so Y Project is really well known for doing just odd, twisted, avant-garde ideas. They, I remember Glenn Mars talked about how really early on in the brand they needed to like for certain pieces send like instruction manuals for how to wear them. Uh, they've gotten away from that slowly though. They still have the creativity, but it's a bit more wearable, I would say, from what I've seen lately. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Some very interesting construction here. This treatment is kind of unlike anything I've ever seen before. So it opens up, but then it's still there underneath as part maybe of this like sweater or whatever it is underneath. Interesting. So we got the year, Paris. It's like an Eiffel Tower, I think, in there. Very interesting. I don't really like the fit, uh, but I like the idea, I think. This looks like he's he's learning from Diesel, you know? The denim treatments. That's a really nice wash on that. Very nice pants. They just they look comfortable too. Elasticated waistband. I can get down with that. Ooh, we got the trompe l'oeil. Okay. Whoa. So it almost looks like it velcros around at the neck. Very cool. And then you get the Y Project belt going around here, and the jeans start, and then it turns into actual jeans. I, I find this top very wearable, actually. I don't totally hate it. It kind of gives me like a, a, I don't know, piss jeans kind of vibe, if anyone knows that band. The jeans, uh, people are really into the front seam right now, aren't they? I like the, I don't know, uh, crumpledness of them. The crimping and uh, some nice rim boots here. Okay, it's a good look. Strong. Kind of like very ready to wear, you know? A lot of women, a lot of women. 
What the hell? Sick belt. Listen, I like it, okay? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on that. Where are the dudes at? Or is this stuff I wanna wear? <laughs> I don't know if that quite uh, meets the criteria of what I wanna wear. So it looks like there's like a sp clear spaghetti string here to keep this together. Cute idea. Um, not something I would ever wear. I don't think that's quite for my body type. Um, sick belt. Very cool belt. And he's so good at these just tweaks to the formula of how to construct pieces. Like a really nice wash on the jeans, really nice um, whiskering. And then this seam that just comes right up to the knee and stops. I bet these are so hard to make. And these boots, dude, holy shit. They look like metal, but then with a metal tip as well. Those boots are so sick. Damn, damn, dude. I just love the creativity, you know? So we've got that in a zip up now. I like it. I like the treatment. Um, insane leather coat. The tan on this is wild. It looks like we've got more of this treatment here. The belt detailing is very cool. Oh, it's a double waistband, you guys. Here we are again, another double waistband. This is getting crazy. And the patchwork on these, somehow it still has like a good fit too. It's like a straight leg jean, but with the treatment, it makes it look like a skinny leg because of this coming in here. That's so cool, that's so smart super innovative like i've never it's stuff you don't see anywhere else okay a night kind of like technical trench coat oh that neckline that comes through there and you got another neck over here the most twisted shirt you will ever see in your life this is one of those instruction manual kind of pieces but still comes to like a relatively normal collar up here really fun belt i love this idea and now we've got these jeans, but in a lighter wash. You can see the detailing a bit more. Oh, what? Oh, these are shoes. They're like clear, maybe 3D printed, like scaled boots. That's nutty. I don't even know what to make of that. This is like a classic Y Project kind of piece right here, this button down with some interesting kind of darting, I guess you would call it. Whoa, that's super cool. That's really cool. And a denim boot. How about that? How about them apples? So this just kind of feels like a person who's really confident in what they do. And they're just kind of at the top of their game, feeling like they can do no wrong. And they're kind of right. Like, it may not be for you, but I think this for what Glenn Martins wants to do, he's pulling it off. This is his vision, and he's like reveling in it. You know what I mean? Maybe we'll do like one more look. All right, here we go. Oh, wow, and cool, we got a slightly different one too. Um, a kind of like sash almost, a denim sash. A trompe l'oeil shirt, striped, with some buttons coming through, a nice necklace. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't even fully understand what's happening here, but it looks good. And then down to the, the denim boots are really nice with the outward, the inside out seam going up the front. Super nice. That's a good look to end on. Yeah, let's call it there. Damn, what to say about that? Yeah, it just feels like a, a master of their craft at work. Uh, that's like everything Y Project's all about, just really perfectly dialed in. Kind of like felt like a victory lap almost. Um, where do you put this? It's clearly not a C. I think the question is, is it a B or is it an A? It's not S. I didn't love it on that kind of level. Um, but I really liked it, man. But I think I like Diesel more. And for that reason, I think I'm actually going to put Y Project. I'm going to put it like right even with, with J.W. Anderson. Yeah, let's leave it right there. And let's move right along to Alexander McQueen. McQueen is a brand that obviously under 
Alexander McQueen the person was like an unstoppable force and those old collections and looks are some of the best fashion ever made but in its current incarnation it's kind of lost the edge that Alexander McQueen had it kept the beauty but lost the edge um that's what I've noticed in the past few years but let's see what the latest collection is all about all right I need to remind myself who's designing for McQueen now uh, Sarah Burton, Sarah Burton, great, uh, atelier, you know what I mean? Like the tailoring is so good. Uh, there we go. Menswear specifically. We'll look at that. Uh, the tailoring is so good and the fabrics look so nice and it's so crisp, but the original McQueen, the designer was so edgy. There was such an attitude to it that I just don't see in the brand anymore. Like, look at this suit. Everything is just perfect. Slightly askew on the pockets, too. Like, some really nice, interesting details. Those pants are, like, to die for, right? Like, who wouldn't want pants that look like that on them? Perfect fit, perfect, like, cut where they hit on the ankle. And some very nice boots for what it's worth. So, like, there's nothing to complain about, but... Is there going to be more to it? Really nice, like skinny, slim fitted suit. Anybody would be happy to, like, let's say you were getting married. That's a great, clean, crisp look for a person with like a, a specific type of body type. I'll give you that. And also the current version of Alexander McQueen is really good at prints. They seem to really like that. Uh, especially prints that kind of flow throughout a tailored piece. This one is no different. Like, goddamn, getting this print to line up in this way has to be insane, unless they do it afterwards. But that would be its own type of challenge. Like, it looks very cool, but it's also just so clean. But I do like this the most out of what we've seen so far, just because the geometry gives it a, an extra level of interest, you know? Crisp, all white, yada yada. Um, I like the bag, very like leather daddy, you know what I mean? We've been kind of getting the same boots for every look so far. All right, we're getting a little edge in here. We get some um, cutouts, some cutouts at the sides. That's nice. Um, some straps. I don't know if that's for a backpack or if that's part of the blazer. If it's part of the blazer, I, I like the new addition. I don't know. This one just has more going on, so I do like it. God damn, the pants, though. The pants, though. I could see not you not liking the shape. They kind of bow out a little bit, but I like it. Oh, and we got a different type of fit. The blazer is, like, identical to the first one, but we got some different pants here, a more modern fit. Slightly straighter leg, a little bit longer. We got this again, like similar, just a different color. And are, are we going to see anything that gets out of, it feels like it's putting itself in a box. It's just really, really good tailoring. Nice, like light, light pink lavender color. Some sneakers kind of remind me of like Rick Owens runners. That classic vintage style. We've got a trench here. Looks like leather to me. I actually like that print less in this leather coat than I did as a suit. It's like, okay, we get it, right? All right, we lose a blazer here, really clean shirt, and then some leather pants. Like, yeah, they're made really well. They fit really well. Whoa, see, here's something different. Cut out cardigan. That looks super cool. Is it like groundbreaking? No, but it looks good. You know, like what more can you say about that? Interesting. Wow. That is a very unique type of knit. Super cool. Again, with the, the geometry, you know? Very like Japanese kind of look to this one. Kind of like Yoji, Comme des Garçons type of look. Um, this might be my favorite so far, but again, like that doesn't read as McQueen to me in the current incarnation. Uh, okay. Kind of like a boiler suit. 
damn, that's clean. Like, would I kill for this? Yes. It looks incredible. Damn, it looks really good. But there's nothing putting it over the top other, other than how clean it is. That feels very Raph Simmons to me. Mm, decent necklace. The cutouts, it's just not... I like the cutouts. I do. It gives it a little bit more edge. Oh my god, that's hideous. Whoa, 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 whoa. Damn, it's so clean. The tailor... Like, Sarah Burton, she should just be in like a Savile Row atelier. Not like a luxury house. It just... There's not enough there for it to be a full luxury brand. Oh my god, those logo suits. Burn them. Burn them. All right, let's call it. Yeah. So here's what I think. I think Alexander McQueen, perfect brand if you got a wedding, right? Like maybe the best suits on the block. You know what I mean? Uh, but there was a little bit more to it. Some of like the, the boiler suits were very cool. Again, very well made. Some interesting stuff with prints, but just zero edge. But you have to credit the tailoring. The tailoring is worth something. I appreciate good tailoring. So it's not a C. It's much better than any of these. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I'm going to put it right above Palm Angels, but below JPG, because JPG has some edge to it. Take some chances. You know what I mean? And it's just one of those things, like, Asian McQueen maybe is the definition of B tier, but there's just like no room to move up or down from that. That's just what it feels like to me. Uh, let's do one more. Let's do one more. And we're going to finish it off with a brand that I know nothing about. I see their ads pop up all the time on Instagram. And that's the extent of my knowledge because now we are talking about Courage. I think that's how you say it. Courage. Um, yeah, I don't know anything. Let's let's see what it looks like. Wow, I was even gonna say, like, actually, I know so little about this brand that we need to read the like write-up on Vogue Runway. But Courage doesn't even get a write-up. It just goes right into the looks. So um we got right into it, I guess. From this look, it's got almost like a rock and roll slash western feel to it. Maybe that's just the pose. I don't know. Yeah, it feels like kind of like a bull rider kind of look. Um Oh, okay, we get, we get a write-up for the collection. Nicholas de Felice, Felice, maybe. Clothes, energy, mo modernity. It's hot. <laughs> Young generation. Uh, designed for men in the set. Courage designed for men in the 70s. Okay, so it's a 70s brand that got, like, restarted. All right, I think that's that's all we need to know. So it is kind of like a throwback almost like there's some other brands that were like that like uh poochie right is another one of those all right so here's our opening look a little strap across the front that's very rick owens rick owens does this at the back of his outerwear um yeah very 70s kind of fit to everything the shoes almost look like like vans um skate highs giant bag Super giant bag. Uh, looks like leather is a is important to this brand. Like the fits are nice, the cuts are good. But so far, I'm not seeing anything special. That looks like it exists just to exist. Um, once you put it in khaki, it starts to look pretty damn boring. Yeah, that was that was not good. Uh, a long sleeve with the logo. Okay. Is this a bag? Is this a denim jacket bag? All right. And then either some leather or it might be like a nylon type of thing. Um, okay. That's a look, I guess. Uh, the strap across the front is just getting weird. Uh, it's a parka and some pants. This is just weird. A zip-up jacket and some pants. 
this doesn't even feel like a luxury brand. This feels like a like a sub luxury brand. Leather kind of moto jacket, maybe. Super high, cut off like cropped knit. And some pants. What is happening? I feel like I'm getting trolled. Like, what am I supposed to take from this? Uh, it's a vest. Okay. A leather jacket out here and a hat. And some pants. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but it's like, what there, What am I supposed to take from these pants? Um, it is like a vintage kind of cut. Flared, le skinny with a flared leg. So that's something. It's a decision that's being made, at least. A design decision. Nice skin tight. Like, uh, I don't know what you call it. A knit vest, maybe it is? You know what I was about to say. I don't need to say it. There's only 16 looks, too. Super long, sleeveless knit dress. Okay. We're ending on a weird one here, you guys. Uh, wrap, shirt, knit, logo. <sighs> I don't think I need to talk about it anymore. Glad we made it to the end of that one. All right, let's rate it. All right, so like I was pretty mean to that. It wasn't like bad, bad. It wasn't like offensive. It just didn't. Most of these other brands have at least found like their reason to exist, right? Even if we don't like it, even if we think it's not done well or it's tacky or it's boring, whatever, they've all staked their claim to like a thing that they do. I don't know if any of that that I just saw feels like it has its own unique reason to exist. It just kind of felt like clothing and not fashion. So for that reason, I think it's worse than the C tier because all of those brands are at least fashion. Uh, I don't think it's Forbidden Dungeon. It doesn't anger me to that level. Uh, I just think not many things were worse than Bape or Missoni. Stella McCartney was really bad. Montclair was really bad. I think it's right in like that Reese Cooper category. Uh, so it's in the Marshall's clearance right next to Reese Cooper. I guess we'll see what they do in the future. Um, and I think we'll end the episode there for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We're really making our way through it. Look at our list. This is crazy. Um, we got some heavy hitters coming up. We still got to talk about Gucci and Fendi and Vet Mom, Moschino, Versace, Burberry, Loewe. My God, it just keeps, there's so many brands, you guys. But that's where we'll leave it. Thank you so much for watching. Take a look at the other video on screen here. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.